Welcome to the World of Data 101. This is Larry Bohumer. This is the first part of a four-part series to help educate you a little bit about the world of M2M -M and Internet of Things. In this first part, we're going to focus on three different types of hardware in the cellular world that are commonly used to connect devices and people to the network. We want to differentiate between what's a long haul and a short haul uh, communications. I think most people are familiar with how Wi-Fi is used in your home or in your office, and it's to provide you connectivity for the internet and other tools that you might use. It's actually no different for machines. In this scenario, we've got an oil well here, and this could be any kind of a meter or a machine in general. The idea is that it's gonna use a Wi-Fi connection, or in some cases, a Bluetooth connection, and it will talk to the gateway in the same way that you would talk to your router at your house. Once the information is received uh, at the router, the difference between a cellular vert one and a wireline based one is quite simply how it's transmitted. The cellular one is going to use a cellular network to provide information uh, to wherever it has to go, to the cloud or to a server of any kind. For this presentation, we're going to focus on the long haul aspect of everything. The first kind of device that's commonly used uh, to connect to the world of cellular internet is a modem. These devices are going to look after most of the connections for you, and they're going to allow you to connect to them via a cable, whether it be a serial or an Ethernet port, or in some cases a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth connection as well. They're usually used in places where landline connections are either not available or not practical, but we're starting to see them uh, used many more times as a complete primary landline replacement. Most people use them to talk to remote devices and perhaps even to provide communication uh, in a vehicle or at a mobile site of some kind. The benefit of using a modem is the relatively quick time to market. It can pretty much be used out of the box by a lot of customers. There's little if any certifications required, whether that be government certification or carrier or industry. And there's generally little expertise that's required from an engineering standpoint to get it to work. Although there can be some work if you have customized IPs and stuff like that. The negative part to using modems can often be cost. Uh, they can cost as much as 10 to 20 times more than using an embedded cellular module, which we're gonna cover next. So it might not make financial sense for people using them in very large deployments, such as several thousand or tens of thousands. They might not also provide the engineering flexibility that some customers are looking for, although they're getting better in this space. And although we might think of them as being relatively small in size, they're not meant to fit onto a system board or inside of many components. So they may actually be too large for a particular application. On the other hand, we have cellular modules. Pretty much any device, or any device for that matter, that goes onto a cellular network has a cellular module inside. So yes, your iPhone and Android device, as well as your tablets, would definitely have these inside. There are small components that are put right onto the system board of a particular device, so they are put on at the time of manufacture. They do just what it does in your cell phone. They provide connectivity for the cell network and communicate with the cell network of the carrier's uh, back end and things like that. Because they're put in at the time of manufacture, they tend to be put in, in large deployments, um, things like agriculture equipment, smart garbage can, medical devices. Pretty much everything nowadays seems to be having a cell module put inside of it. The benefits to modules are primarily two Cs, control and cost. It offers the lowest cost per unit uh, to connect to the internet. And for people that are doing large production runs, it makes all the sense in the world. It also allows the manufacturer to have maximum control over the solution because there's all kinds of commands and instructions that can be put in. The negative side for some is that the manufacturer must take on a lot of the industry certification and carrier certification, as well as much of the engineering cost to bring the solution to market. This not only adds cost, however, it can add time as it can often add several months to even a couple years um, to the time it takes to get a solution to market. Hybrid devices, there's all kinds of names for them, we like to just call them hybrids, are a hybrid for a reason, because it takes some of the good parts of a modem and some of the good parts of a module, and for many customers, it can be the ideal solution. Like a module, it allows the manufacturer the ability to take these units and put them directly onto the system board. However, like a modem, it can also reduce some of the certification work and time to market. So it might seem like a perfect mix for some customers. However, it definitely isn't perfect for everyone. The cost of these units are generally still several times what a module is, and so that it might be an upfront uh, cost that you might not want to consider. You might still have to do some certification work as well, and you might not get to market as fast as a modem. 
But for some customers, uh, it might be a good balance because it still allows you some engineering flexibility uh, to be able to use this. Um, finally, you are required to have some kind of onboard engineering capability, whether it's yourself or somebody else, to be able to maintain these devices when things like firmware comes out. So again, it is a bit more work than a modem, but it could be a good balance for uh, some customers. The final slide we have is a bit of a product selection guide. As we mentioned, modems are, are an easy way to get to market and it's a generally quick time to market. It can be as little as days or weeks. They generally have a little less engineering requirements and are usually ideal for deployments up to 5,000 units. Once you get over 5,000 units, cellular modules are often a better choice uh, because they offer a lower cost per unit. However, that is balanced out a little bit by the longer time to market and the bit more engineering work that may be required by you or for you to have it done for you. As I mentioned, hybrid devices can often fill a gap in the market because they offer some of the flexibility of a module at generally a bit lower price point than a modem, and it does help your time to market as well. We look forward to having you come back to watch our 201 series, which touches on some of the key applications that you might want to learn about for the M2M world. Until then, this is Larry Bill Humor. Thanks.